Morning all. Saturday morning, I'm here in the Five Art Studio at Liberty Station in San Diego this morning, and it's a quiet Saturday morning, so I thought I'd take advantage and do a little video on papers, mixed media and papers. I can't tell you how many times I've had students show up at a class, a mixed media class, and say, I don't have any papers. I didn't bring papers. I didn't have any. To which I reply, you have a trash can, don't you? There's always papers. You can always find papers. I'm always picking up little bits and pieces to add into my art. Whether they end up showing up or not doesn't really matter, but there's always papers to be had. They don't always have to be the special cyanotype, the perfect piece that you, that you purchased and you fall in love with. They can be a strip that you ripped off of another painting or cut off of another painting. Um, all of these are just strips of paper that I pulled off and laid down. There's nothing special about them. They're just are scraps from my scrap pile. And um, with that, let me show you some of the ideas that I, that I play with. Tags off of clothes. I always save these. They always come in handy. These are little papers from a Chinese market. I love the metallic that is on them. Um, so I use those a lot. Napkins, little decorative napkins. If you know my art, you'll recognize these little watercolor polka dots that show up in little cocktail napkins. Letters, old letters. Never throw those away and the envelopes that they come in. This is a great addition. This is one of my favorite things whenever I finish painting for the day, I take my painting palette and I use tracing paper for my painting palette and I just kind of brush it all, brush it all out and see what kind of colors I get. So these are old palette papers. This is the kind of stuff I use more than anything. Um, just torn up pieces of paper to add color. Uh, these are little papers that were sent by one of my friends to me via email. These are hand-painted papers. Now, I will use her papers in my art, and these are so great to make when you can't, when you don't have what you think is a special paper, grab some copy paper and just start painting on it. Um, all the little throwaway newspapers, uh, I, I, you know, you can find, I mean, look. That's great. You can find words in the papers. This was a Sudoku puzzle that I pulled out of the trash that it's from a Chinese newspaper. So that's gonna be really great stuff. This is wrapping from a package I received. I'm gonna use it for sure. A brown paper bag. Um, I use a lot of, of, of just craft paper that you can paint on. Any kind of little specialty bag. Look at this great little, little paper bag with the little windmills. And uh, I think I probably got this when I was in Amsterdam. I'm the one at the holiday uh, when we all open our gifts that's collecting ribbons and tissue paper for future pieces of art. Uh, not only pattern papers for dressmaking patterns, but also the great little instruction sheets that come in. This, believe it or not, is from a phone book. I actually recently received a yellow page phone book in the mail, and I love the, the, how thin this paper is. It's great to work with. This, old Thomas guide, old uh, street directory guide. Look at the great colors that that is gonna offer. This is out of an atlas. Again, great colors. And then a couple of my favorites are my National Geographic with Citrusol papers. And um, look how, how, wow, this offers so much in making these uh, National Geographic and Citrusol papers. They just, um, I mean, look how fun that is. And, and at the end of this video, hop over to my Citrus Solve. I'll, I'll link up my Citrus Solve and that geo so you can figure out and find out how to do these yourself. 
Some of them end up even having some of the image still show through, so I can't wait to use this one on something. But Citrus Alba Nat Geo, wonderful, wonderful papers. And then of course, there's always the jelly papers. I use my jelly papers more than the ones that I actually put a design on. I use just the colored, that don't have a lot going on. This one has a lot going on. But I use a lot of my jelly papers, and the ones I use the most are the papers that I have sitting aside my jelly plate that I use to clean my grayer off. So that this is a great way to have papers. And just so you know, in my home studio, I have three bins with uh, 10 drawers each. So that's 30 drawers that I have papers separated by color. But to be honest, this is all I need. I have this sitting by my table, by my work table, and I'm one of those artists that I won't go over across my studio to those 30 drawers and look for the perfect paper. I reach for what's close to me. Um, I'm very in the moment with my work, so I'll just pull up what I have close by. So what I make sure to do is have this by my desk, by my work table, and I have little things like, I mean, this great little book. I'm, it has very cool little things to rip out and use as I go along. I have a whole selection of little books like that. Um, an old Webster Dictionary. Don't really need that, but that's going to be really great pictures, uh, uh, papers for my mixed media. So I have a whole collection of little books. This one I keep because I like that it has numbers and, and big uh, uh, type that I can kind of piecemeal into a piece. So I have this whole little collection. Um, I have a couple little boxes that playing cards, playing cards are great. Monopoly, money. Um, I have these little scrap boxes that when I see things, I just rip them out and throw them in these boxes. So I have things that are readily available to me when I'm in the moment and I'm getting my, my uh, getting my groove on with my papers and gluing them down. There's a whole box here. I don't even throw away the little tear-offs for my spiral books. Um, this is papers, pieces of uh, wallpaper that I made one time. And this is probably the last bits of it, but I love this paper. I use this a lot. Um, what else do I have in here? Magazine clippings. Sometimes it's just for inspiration, but these are really, I mean, look at this color. How great is that? So that's something I can use. So when you think you don't have things, look around. Uh, I keep these little bins for, as I'm working, little scraps get thrown into here. So I've always got little scraps to work with and I keep stamps. I mean, I couldn't throw those away. Pieces of fabric. Pieces of a piece of paper that I've already used, but I want that little scrap. So, when you think you don't have any paper, make sure uh, to go through your trash. Go through a desk drawer. You're going to find scraps. Go through your mail when you your mail comes in. Um, Go through your, your mail and pull out the junk mail. Sometimes you can do a whole piece just with junk mail. You know you're gonna go in and paint over it or add more papers over it, whatever you're gonna do. Don't come in and say you don't have papers because you have papers, I know it. So if you wanna know more about the Citrusolve and who doesn't, come on, look how great that is. Check out the video at the end. If you wanna know more about Jelly Plate, I also have a couple videos on Jelly Plate. I'll, I'll post one of those. And um, thanks for checking in with me this week and seeing what's out up in the studio. I really hope this little tip will, will um, help you get over your paper collecting and know that you can keep it all in one little bin. You don't have to get a, an elaborate file system. Um, I find that the more elaborate fi the file system, the less I'm gonna use those papers. So now you know um, you don't have to do an elaborate storage system. Just get something next to your art table that you can keep organized and, and throw your scraps in. And um, 
There you go. Happy Mixed Media and Mixed Media Ing. And make sure to hit the thumbs up on your way out and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.